name's Hans Littler. That's uh, Littler, it's like Hitler, <laughs> but with an L. <laughs> and I'm a civil engineer, um, so this year is the year of the civil engineer, the year of the engineer. Um, I'm going to go out and spread the gospel of the engineers, um, of uh, Brunel, uh, Dyson, uh, Littler. <laughs> um, so I'm a bit nervous talking to you tonight because I'm used to talking to uh, contractors, so it's unusual that people are actually paid attention to me. Um, they don't think I'm bossy, and their asses aren't hanging out of their trousers. <laughs> guys. Um, so let's start off with a, what is an engineer, okay? So the dictionary defines an engineer as a person who uses scientific knowledge to design, construct, and maintain structures. It's a reasonable. Um, so they then go on to define it as a, an engineer is a person who repairs mechanical electrical devices. No. <laughs> uh, it's not the person who fixes the bridge in the office isn't an engineer. It's uh, the fact he doesn't use scientific knowledge when he does it. He just does stuff that might work. But the worst of it is, is that when our printer breaks at work, um, we can't fix it even though we're by engineers. <laughs> So um, I started to cheat tonight and Google some engineering jokes, um, and they were awful. <laughs> you know, I was expecting the classics, you know, erections, piles, <laughs> no, no, they're awful. Um, so, uh, how can you tell the human body was designed by a civil engineer? Uh, they put the sewer outlet in a play area. <laughs> Engineers because it's their birthday this year um, and they're divas, you know. Um, <laughs> so, this is how the started 200 years ago uh, by three young gentlemen in a cafe because um, we like coffee and it, they probably have presents of people as Thomas Telford, Robert Stevenson, basically loads of white guys. Um, <laughs> but there has been a female president, um, the wonderful Jean Venables in 2008, um, and she's a little idol for me. So uh, she was doing a lecture in Winchester, so I went to go along so I to meet her. Um, so I'm sat there and Jean's walking towards me. I go, oh, she's going to talk to me. She wants to know where the toilet is. So I'm obsessed by toilets. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, she's walking towards me and I'm thinking, oh, I can tell her all about the exciting toilets in Winchester called Hall. Um, they are um, they are exciting. Um, they are vacuum flush, okay? So it doesn't waste potable water. And Jean's there to do a talk about flooding, so I know she wants to know about the toilets. <laughs> um, my social skills are not that poor. I knew I couldn't, I shouldn't follow to the toilet. And that's wrong. <laughs> but um, she's walking towards me, and I'm just staring, just going. <laughs> she, um, so. She's a good engineer. She knows health and safety. We're told, if in doubt, get out. <laughs> so she just waves at me and just walks in the direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have met the next uh, female president, uh, Rachel Skinner. She's the only president of 2020. She's actually my manager. She's, called, she's my line manager, line manager, line manager, line manager. She's my uh, great, great brand manager. <laughs> research, actually do things. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm a higher engineer. Uh, I'm actually a higher engineer. Um, I specifically design intro for cyclists. Um, <laughs> yes. um, you're probably a higher engineer. <laughs> you're probably a higher engineer. Everyone thinks they know how to do your job. 
Um, structural ingenuity, they don't get any people going, you've used the wrong concrete, or you should have put a cable stay bridge over that, over the other direction. <laughs> but unfortunately, they seem to think they've got to tell what to do. Um, so, because people sit in roadworks and they kind of look, they're sat in the roadworks and go, oh, they're doing that wrong. I'm going to email them and tell them they're doing it wrong. <laughs> Yeah, so unfortunately I can't read out their emails for uh, data protection, but I've got a letter from the Daily Echo which really um, sums up the kind of things people write to me about. Um, so this is a gentleman. Uh, over the years I've read about accidents involving cyclists, nearly all of them would be hit from behind or from the side by vehicles, turn left without seeing them. Both this type of accident have been because the cyclist didn't see what was about to happen. The latter happened to a friend of mine many years ago on the railway bridge at Southampton Airport when he was knocked off his bike and crushed by an HGV lorry. There are many reasons for this. One, the lorry driver didn't see him, and two, my friend didn't see the lorry driver closing on him. <laughs> Had he been facing the traffic on the other side of the road, this would have not happened, obviously. <laughs> but my point is that had he been facing the lorry in a similar situation, he would very probably would have taken some avoiding action because he would have been in a dangerous situation. Can anyone hear Bunny Hop? <laughs> While cycling forward, whilst the HEV is descending on you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was born in the countryside and we were taught that when there were no pavements, always walk facing the traffic so that we could see what's happening and jump out the way if we needed to. It seems to me a lot of cyclists' lives could be saved if they see drunken drivers or out of control vehicles heading for them. <laughs> this would give them some chance of avoiding some serious harm, seeing as they have zero protection from motor vehicles. Strange as it may seem, perhaps cyclists should be told to ride facing traffic for their own safety as best they can. Strange as it may seem, should we not stop people driving while drunk? <laughs> So yeah, um, <laughs> I have to be very diplomatic at work with my clients, I tend to political authorities, um, but I'm also a Sunday school teacher, and there are a lot of transferable skills. Um, <laughs> so, I, I, um, I had a client whose project was running behind and he wanted to um, speed it up and save costs, so he just we built it in an unsta un unstable, unstable ground. Um, so I thought of the, um, the parable of the foolish man who built his house upon the sand. That's a great song, and um, don't worry, I'm not going to sing it because I can't sing, as my Sunday school class know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, basically, I told him the story using technical language, but the uh, same bloody story. So um, yeah, that is life as a civil engineer. Well.